processing information that is going to eventually yield a perception of pain is called nociception. And nociception is the processing of tissue damaging stimuli or stimuli that if they continued would eventually damage tissue. And so the, the, this is a system built around imminent danger. And it's, a, it's built in order to protect the person from that danger. In individuals who do, do not have those afferents, the A delta and C fiber afferents that respond to, to uh, tissue damaging uh, stimuli or imminently tissue damaging stimuli, they have a lot of injuries that are um, the consequence of not being able to automatically protect themselves. And um, th this, this condition of congenital insensitivity to pain, uh, there are a number of people with this. W one of them uh, uh, was profiled. Ashlyn uh, Blocker was profiled in the New York Times Magazine a uh, number of years ago. And uh, she's doing extremely well because she uses, until she was um, old enough to fend for herself, her parents really, really protected her. And now she's, she's a smart woman and she uses cognitive tricks to make sure that she doesn't hurt herself. And even so, she, she has injuries. Um, so, uh, the, uh, th this shows the incredible importance of being able to perceive pain. So if there is the, per if tissue damage is occurring or is about to occur, this system, the alarm bells go off and there are a number of reactions. And the first reaction that we think about is a withdrawal reaction getting our, our whatever part of our body is in imminent danger out of that imminent danger. But there are a number of other uh, reactions as well. Um, these are not only the motor reaction of, of say, withdrawing, but also um, autonomic reactions. Uh, m there might be an a, a, uh, increase in, in heart rate. Uh, and then there are affective reactions, emotional reactions. Ouch. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, stop it. The motivation. This, this is a. This is not a, a an emotional new, emotionally neutral experience. People don't want to feel pain, so there is an engagement of effective reactions, and there also is a perception. Oh, it's my hand that hurts. It's my hand that just got hurt, not my foot. I know it's my hand, and I know it got hurt one minute ago, not an hour ago. There's so that's a sensory discriminative component to it. And for uh, superficial pain, we, we have all of these. Um, but in fact, we can do something about superficial pain, pain that, that impacts our skin or even um, uh, muscle um, or bone, which is we can withdraw. We can escape from this pain. We can increase our cardiac output. We can shut down digestion. We can increase blood flow to skeletal muscles. So we're trying to get away. We're trying to escape from this. And this is a very whole body reaction. It's also in a, a whole brain reaction. And so the, there's a lot of engagement of memory. How, how the heck did this happen? I'm never coming back here again. I'm really motivated to run. I'm going to, um, I'm going to form a memory about this. I'm going to uh, make sure I never get into this situation again, et cetera. So, uh, and I'm going to do everything I can to make it stop right now. Now, there are other nociceptive events that are very different, which, so this is, this, these are, these superficial events are, um, are, are escapable. And there are other, um, nociceptive events that are not escapable. And so <clears throat> uh, I want to tell you a story about one such event. This is uh, about a, this is a, um, there was a story about a, a builder, a, a, a carpenter who was using a nail gun and the nail gun backfired and he, he had a cut in his cheek. So he goes to the hospital and they sewed up the cut in his cheek, um, and then he goes home. That 
heals, and, and about a week later, he says to his wife, I'm, I have a toothache. My tooth really hurts. And she said, she happens to work for a dentist, so she says, why don't you come in and see my dentist? Goes in to see the dentist. They take an x-ray, and lo and behold, no one had ever found the nail from the nail gun. And the nail was, uh, was, had gone through his tooth. This was beyond what the dentist could deal with, so they took, um, they sent him <clears throat> over to the hospital where the following x-ray was taken. Um, and what you can see here is the x-ray went through the tooth, through the bone, and into the, into the brain, into the cranium. And it ended up in the frontal cortex. So these deep structures, including the tooth, including the, the gums, the, and a lot of bone, this was all damaged, and yet there was absolutely no awareness until it started to get infected. So the way we can think about that is that this is an inescapable pain, inescapable pain and the reactions to this are very, very different. So contrast this reaction to the reaction to a paper cut. If you have a paper cut, you notice it right away. He noticed his, the cut in his uh, cheek where the, the nail went through. Um, you notice a, a paper cut right away, but you don't notice, you wouldn't notice this if it happened to you. Um, and so the uh, responses to deep inescapable pain happened, they're, they're very different. They're, there's nothing to withdraw from. You can't withdraw from your own innards. <clears throat> so common reactions are things such as social withdrawal, anorexia, and a decrease in, uh, in uh, heart rate, uh, uh, just uh, immobility. And this is give everything uh, to recuperating and recovering if possible. This is an evolutionary reaction to, to try and recover. If the pain system goes wrong, what we've just talked about is the pain is very protective. What happens if the pain system goes wrong beyond the fact that you may uh, get injured? Um, well, in, from a perceptual point of view, we've already talked about the fact that uh, lesions in sensory systems give you positive signs. They give you signs such as in the somatic sensory system, they give you paresthesias, sensations that should not, that, that result, but um, are not linked to the stimulus. So if we move over to the board, paresthesias, we know that when they're unpleasant, they're dysesthesias. The ones that revolve around pain have specific names, and there are three ones that we're going to think about. One is allodynia. And allodynia simply means that there is a, a perception of pain in response to a non-tissue damaging stimulus. So if you've ever heard, if you've ever seen somebody um, who is sensitive just to touch. They might be guarding a hand or a foot. They may be, in fact, uh, not walking on a foot because it's so painful. Um, but that's a touch stimulus uh, that is causing this. This is a very common and debilitating uh, pain condition, allodynia. So you're getting a pain stimulus even from, say, a light breeze. A light breeze on a piece of allodynic skin can cause a, a perception of pain. Hyperalgesia it refers to perceiving a much greater pain uh, perception than is warranted by the noxious stimulus. So if normally there's um, uh, pain is typically rated on a one to 10 visual analog, what's called a visual analog scale. So on one to 10, where's your pain? This is the worst pain. This is no pain. Where do you put your pain? Um, if, if there's uh, a noxious stimulus and the magnitude of that and the intensity of that noxious stimulus increases and the pain percept increases it with some value, a hyperalgesia will simply mean that there's, there's, more, uh, there's more pain perceived for every stimulus. And finally, <clears throat> an exaggerated version of, uh, uh, of these 
of allodynia is just that there's spontaneous pain. There's pain right now. No stimulus, no discernible stimulus, and yet there's constant pain. So spontaneous pain is something that all, all three of these, uh, particularly allodynia and spont spontaneous pain, will drive people to seek medical care. Okay, so now what we're going to do is talk about the primary afferents that that sense noxious stimulus. These are nociceptors. We're gonna talk about nociceptors.